Utah's beauty has been described as flamboyant and bizarre, and there's no better proof than its five national parks. Zion, Bryce, Capitol Reef, Arches, and Canyonlands. Each an incredible and unique destination, and each on the itinerary for this trip. We had spent the night just outside of Zion on a cliff edge overlooking the Virgin River Valley, waking up to beautiful views across to the park. I am back in Utah, believe it or not. This time I am joined by Conrad, who just flew in from England to come join us out here, and Justin. And when Conrad was messaging me, he basically said he wants to Utah. He's seen the videos, this is the place he wants to come. So we're gonna explore, see some of the best sites, uh, including the big five national parks, starting with the one behind me, which is Zion. On our way down from the Mesa, Justin took us to a nearby ghost town. Hi. What's the name of this place? Grafton. Grafton. Just Grafton. Just Grafton. And that's where we slept. Grafton ghost town is an unusual one. Almost every ghost town I visited was settled and then later abandoned due to the successes and failures of nearby mines. Grafton was settled as part of a colonization project led by Brigham Young to help Utah become self-sufficient. Unfortunately, there were lots of setbacks. Flooding, harsh winters, and attacks from Native Americans made life difficult. From Grafton, it was a short drive to Springdale, the entryway to Zion National Park. Well, we made it into the park, and we figured rather than getting on one of those packed shuttles, we've seen the lines, really long lines to go on the shuttles, we figured we'd rent a bike instead. And because we're lazy, we're going with these, these little e-bikes. It's been a very long time since I've ridden a bike and I've never ridden an e-bike, so this should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Things started a little wobbly. <laughs> but we're soon racing each other with them set to max speed. I'm trying to catch up. The month's topped out at 17 miles an hour. There's a faster. Get down really low. It'll be more aerodynamic. I'm actually pedaling now. <laughs> the e bikes were a great way to enjoy the sights of the park and definitely beat sitting on the crowded bus and watching it through the windows. Yeah, how's my hair look? Um, Swept back. You look aerodynamic. Fantastic. Good, because uh, I got helmet hair. That's where you're getting your speed from. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's why you got the fastest bike. It's not fair. That was still a lot of fun, but I was definitely a good half a mile an hour slower than everyone else. It's the red bike. It's we the knew red the red bike. bike was going to be the fast one. Lightning McQueen, ka -chow. Yep, so we've made it down to the end, to the narrows hike. I don't think we're going to go in the water because it is still quite cool and the water's probably freezing. But we'll head down there and check it out. There are several hikes worth doing in the park, including Angel's Landing, the Emerald Pools, and of course, the Narrows. When my wife and I had visited in 2020, we were part of a small group who had been allowed into the park and really enjoyed the refreshing walk in the water on the hot summer day. 
And we are just heading back through the park now, heading out towards the east side. So we're gonna go through the tunnel and then to what I think is probably the prettiest part or the prettiest drive uh, out the east side of the park. Uh, I'm gonna start looking for a camp. It's five o'clock now. And I think I know a spot down by a creek that's not too far away. All right, we just made it to camp and we've actually been out for a few more nights than you've seen on the video. So we are in need of a shower and thankfully tonight is the first night where it's comfortable out in a t-shirt. So we have set up the Julka shower, the hot tap and their deluxe shower tent that you can see like right there behind me. And that thing's awesome. Uh, tons of space, but folds up fairly compact, uh, small enough to fit in the Rome boxes that I've got on the roof rack there but super easy setup and we have a hot shower, which, you know, after you've been camping for a while, you kind of need, I, I definitely need it right now. It's a good thing this is not like, smell doesn't come through the camera. That evening, as we sat around the campfire, we told Conrad about the mountain lion Justin and I had heard while camping in the Uinta Mountains. If you've heard one, you'll know how terrifying they are. Shortly after, Conrad started hearing things in the dark. There's eyes. Over a tree. Trees. Yeah, it's deer. Yeah. Deer yep. Last night the temperature did end up dropping quite a lot. It got pretty cold around 4 a.m. Thankfully we we're fairly sheltered in this valley so the wind wasn't too bad. Uh, I just plugged in my heated blanket into the Red Arc system and cranked that up so I was able to stay warm. This morning we are going to backtrack to the east the way we came. We could continue west and actually this is the road that we came out on a few years ago when I did the Overland movie. There's a really really steep sandy hill which you pretty much have to winch up I think uh, and just at the top of that is where Elizabeth got stuck when we did the movie and we had to winch because Justin and I neither of us have winches yet that's not something we're going to be doing so we're heading that way over to Bryce before setting off we decided to do some sound recording for our drone shots using Justin's fancy mic setup I'll let him tell you about it I've got my NTG4 plus in there running to my Zoom H4n Pro. Links in the description. Yeah. I'll let you enjoy the results.
just before reaching the highway, we passed a tunnel that I'd seen on Instagram just a couple of weeks before the trip. Well, this is Belly of the Dragon. We drove past it last night. It's off the side of the road. I had no idea it was here but I've seen it before on Instagram. So this morning on the way out, I figured we'd stop and come through and explore. I think it's just a drain that goes under the highway that goes straight across here. It's just man-made cave dug through the rock. Oh, fun. I like it. We are just outside of Zion and actually you can kind of see Zion's off in the distance somewhere up there. But we're back on dirt roads, so we're just airing down for that. And honestly, I don't know a lot about this dirt road. This is one of the ones I just saw on a map and decided to take it. Uh, my goal is to kind of link Zion National Park and Bryce Canyon via unpaved roads like this. I do have some concerns because uh, it's kind of early in the year and this goes up to around 9,000 feet so I'm a little worried it's gonna be snowy uh, and if we end up getting to some trails that have got a bunch of snow on them then we'll turn around and we'll come back and save it for the summer but who knows I can just make out some mountains in the background those might be the ones we're going across and I don't see any snow so we might be okay Well, this is camp for the night. We're in some BLM land. We just noticed a little pull off to the side of the trail that looked suitable. There are a couple of patches of snow that you can probably see here. We are at 6,700 feet here. The trail does continue up to about 9,300, I think it was, or 9,500. We figured we'd be better off stopping down here because it'd be a little bit warmer. And actually, I can already feel the chill, probably the chill coming off of the snow here. So we're gonna get set up and uh, light a fire probably somewhere between the two vehicles. Right now, Justin's just trying to get level. He's struggling. I offered to go get some rocks. That would make life easier. Just a rock under the front tire. You took all the good spots. Yeah, all of them. All of them. One truck. Now it's worse front to back. It just lifted my back. Maybe I should lift my front. Guess and check. Slow, slow, slow. Right. No more. No over there. I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna run out of memory at this rate. <laughs> okay everybody, I'll figure this out. We'll see you when I get it figured out.
This campsite may not have the views that we've had at the other campsites on this trip, but camping in the trees next to a creek, there's just something about having that creek bubbling away all night long that just helps you sleep a lot better. So today, we're gonna continue up the trail, going higher, and I'm a little concerned, I think I mentioned this yesterday, we're at 6,700 feet here, and we've got patches of snow. We're going up to, I think, around 9,300 feet, so things could get a little tricky. We'll have to see how it goes. So we have reached snow, and it is quite deep snow here in the shade of the trees. And there are a few more patches as we go up. So I'm just gonna, I'm just walking on ahead to take a look and see how it goes. We can definitely make it through the previous patch. We can definitely make it through this patch. But we are at uh, 8,600 feet. So obviously there's a long way to go. I'm just gonna walk on ahead and take a little look. Cause if it opens up, and we end up out of the trees, we could probably do it. But obviously, if it's just a constant going through big piles of snow, I'm not about to. Now, I don't think this is gonna happen. It's pretty deep snow here, and of course we've got another 600 feet to climb. And I'm out of breath, you have to excuse me. I guess I'm not used to the altitude, and I'm not exactly the fittest person anyway. Six miles back, I took the turn off I'd seen on the map, and we immediately ran into a problem. Let's see what the sign says. Well, I guess we're not taking Hay Canyon either, because it's private property. So, back on the road, we're gonna go all the way around to Rice Canyon. Basically back the way we came yesterday. After taking our 50 mile detour, we finally pulled into Bryce Canyon, where I convinced Justin and Conrad that we should really do the Wall Street hike. You do one hike in Bryce Canyon, Wall Street is the one, but you need some patience to get the shot because there's a lot of people down here. The other downside with the hike, like most of the hikes in Bryce Canyon, is you have to go back up again. We are just leaving Bryce Canyon. Uh, we stopped off on the way out to grab ourselves some pizza to eat. Uh, and 
we are looking for a place to camp now. The original plan for camping was to camp right here. Uh, we've got two camp spots, but unfortunately both of them are right at the top of a mountain and it is really windy and it's supposed to be really cold tonight. Um, I think the wind is in the mid twenties and it's gusting up into 40 mile an hour range at, at the top of the mountain. So we don't want to camp up there. The original route had us going up to Capitol Reef from here. I had a whole trail planned um, and actually one of them I have done before and it's a really good one. But that goes over the top of a mountain, uh, over 10,000 feet, and it's going to be snowed over. So instead, we're going to head south. Rob's telling me something happened to the drone. Yeah, I was following you, like, I don't know, like that close. Uh huh. I don't know. It'll be on camera. We'll show it. We'll show the clip. I was following you really closely, and I saw something come flying up with the drone from the back of your truck, and then everything stopped working. I couldn't see anything. Did it? But it seems to be. If you turn it off and turn it back on, will it work? I, I hope so. <laughs> but I think I don't know I'm surprised like there's no cracks do it did I hit there or? did I hit a sensor with a rock or something maybe but, like the camera just shut off oh the camera shut off <laughs> while we were driving along high speed so I just went up well let's and see if it uh, turns back on yeah watch the gimbal Oh, that's that's promising. So you gotta look at your controller now and see what it. Gimbal doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, I guess we hit the gimbal. Maybe that's what. Oh, is it a? It's lamp. Yeah, I think we hit the gimbal with a rock. <laughs> Maybe a gimbal recal might fix it. Maybe we'll try that at camp. If not, we need to go down to. Is there a Best Buy and page. Thankfully, Justin allowed me to fly his drone, so I was still able to capture the beautiful Cottonwood Canyon. That evening, well after the sun had set, we pulled into a sheltered spot for camp and immediately went to bed. I know this is a video about Utah, but technically this morning we are waking up in Arizona. We are just over the border, just outside of Page. And we were actually camping in Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. So I had to walk about 300 feet up here to the BLM land because I want to test out my drone. So I'm just outside of the National Recreation Area now. We did a gimbal reset on this. I really hope it works. If it doesn't, I, I'm going to have to buy a new drone because like, that's why I'm out here. And uh, Flagstaff's about a two hour, three hour drive from here. So I'm really hoping it works. This 
morning we're taking Conrad to experience the pinnacle of American breakfast. I can get a McGriddle. I like the sausage and the cheese. Not so much the egg and the... Uh... Not sure the egg fits in there. Uh. Of course, while you're in Page, you also have to visit the Instagram famous Horseshoe Bend overlooking the Colorado River. In 2019, we stayed here in Page at Lone Rock Campground, and I've heard the water level has gone down a ton since we were here, so I figured we'd drive down and check it out. What's crazy is right now, last time we were here, I would have been this is would be driving in the water. Yet ahead of me, <laughs> like there's still a significant distance to go before you get to it. The water level is so much lower than it was here just a few years ago. So last time we were here, we rescued like I don't know five to ten people who got stuck, and we pulled up to the edge. Comrades were getting ready to go in, take a little dip, and while we're doing that, along comes the sequoia. So <laughs> we're gonna help him get out. Hey, we all get stuck. So why do I carry this stuff? <laughs> go, 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 Well, that was fun, but we need to get out of here before someone else gets stuck because we've got a lot of distance to travel. We are heading north, basically across, I don't know, the Badlands, this area over here. What an incredible view up here at the top, and that was a gorgeous drive coming up the cliff face. You can just see, I mean, we've gained well over a thousand feet, and you can see the road we're on earlier coming across the valley that you can see for miles. This is a fantastic spot, and there is a campsite up here. I wish it was a little bit later in the day so we could stay here and camp, especially since it's actually not windy today. It would be the perfect spot. I'll make sure I mark this one anyway, so if you are one of the Patreon followers who get the tracks, You'll have this one, you can come up here. From the incredible overlook, we continue north across a relatively flat plateau, which eventually made its way into a series of turns through mesas and small washes. After passing a sign warning of rock slides, the road dropped down sharply into a beautiful canyon.
As the canyon opened up, we made our way onto smoother, faster roads before ending up on Highway 12, following the Hogback Ridgeline towards the Burr Trail. One of the things I've been doing on this trip is testing out this prototype draw system from SHW Off-Road. And it's a great draw system. It's got tons of space because, well, it takes up every single inch of room in the bed. It's also fully extending with 500 pound draw slides. And it's really light. Uh, and that's one of the things I'm testing and one of the reasons we're testing it is just because it's a new material. This thing weighs, I think about 160 pounds. Uh, and most of that's just in the draw slide hardware here so we need to put it through its paces on this trip and that's one of the things we've been doing uh, i have not been gentle with it there have been a few times where i've gone over pretty harsh bumps getting everything jumping around in the back i do have a few suggestions so uh the final draw system probably won't look exactly like this because i got well three things that i think need to be changed before we uh or before wes my buddy who owns shw off-road releases it to the public but he does have he got he's got the tundra scanned uh, Tacoma scanned ready to go and the Jeep Gladiator ready to go so I'll put a link to those in the description hopefully by the time this video comes out they'll be ready to buy so we're getting packed up and then we're gonna head out along the Burr Trail and a road that goes basically in and out of Capitol Reef National Park for the rest of the day so we'll have some spots of drone footage and some spots without Alright, we have made it to the Strike Valley Trailhead in Capitol Reef National Park. Apparently, just up there is a really good view. Alright, quiet on set. This is I'm Rob. <laughs> I like to talk in other people's videos. I'm from Norfolk. <laughs> Shire. <laughs> I didn't even think about what I was going to say. I just started talking because I knew you were going to say something. <laughs> oh, <you did. laughs> yeah. yeah, this is definitely worth the hike up here. The view is incredible over the Strike Valley. And you can actually see the road that we'll be taking later. We're going to drive down this entire thing. And I think at some point we leave the park. I think, I don't know if it's just up there or if it's down there. So I'm hoping to get some good drone footage of this.
we made it to the Capitol Reef Visitor Center and Justin is airing up and I am not. That's because Justin has places to be and I don't. So he's going to go back to Salt Lake City. We are going to continue on our way through Capitol Reef up to the north side. Now of course no trip to Capitol Reef is complete without coming up to the north side of the park into Cathedral Valley. It's really a unique area, well worth coming up, especially to visit Temple of the Sun and Temple of the Moon up here. Um, we are now looking for somewhere to camp. Um, Justin give, did give us a spot, but it is right on top of a cliff. Fantastic views, but of course with views come wind, and you may have seen from the drone footage the amount of dust that's being whipped up by the wind coming across here. So I really don't know where we're going to go. We need to find somewhere that is a little more sheltered, so I think I'm just going to start heading towards Hanksville, and if we can find somewhere along the way, we'll stop. If not, I'll look around on Gaia when I've got some cell service and uh, see if I can find a place. We have made our decision about camping. We're actually going to go over to Moab. We've just reached the highway here outside of Hanksville, uh, so we're going to take that all the way over there. It means cutting off a bit of a route we had planned, but I'll still share that so Patreon viewers can go out and check that out. But basically we're running out of time. We still have two more national parks to do, Arches and Canyonlands, and only got a few more days to do them. So we've got to make up the time somewhere, and I don't want to miss out on those. So. We'll see you tomorrow morning in Moab. We're up ridiculously early, but if you want to make it to this national park, you've got to be.
So we've just stopped at the Sand Flats Recreation Area and I've got Conrad outside airing down for us. We're getting ready to go on to Hell's Revenge and you know I feel like that's one of those iconic trails you've just got to take someone on when they're here for the first time, especially that first hill climb. Uh, I've done it before, did it in my Jeep that I had several years ago, I've done it in the Forerunner. First time in the Tundra. A little nervous because it's got about the same ground clearance as the Forerunner had, but it is a lot bigger. So we'll see how it goes. Hell's Revenge started out well, with the initial climb and first obstacle causing no problems for the Tundra or its lack of clearance. But going into the second obstacle, I started dragging the tail along the ground, pulling off pieces of trim. At the top, I decided to see how it would do on a large ledge. Going up, it was fine but I completely misjudged the angle when backing off. The result was a pretty mangled front bumper. Despite the front bumper being an easy fix, I was stressed and annoyed at myself. With a lot of things damaged in a very small amount of time, I wasn't keen to take on anything else where my stupidity could cause any more problems. We continued along the incredibly steep yet easy slick rock trail but turned around at the end of it to do something a little easier and a little more relaxing. Alright, this is more like it. So after what was a kind of stressful morning, we've come out to my favorite little loop that I do in Moab. This is a place that I take everyone that I bring out here because it's such a scenic little loop. Uh, basically you go up Long Canyon here and then down Schaefer Trail switchbacks and you just get incredible views the entire way. And of course, while we're at the top, we can go knock out our last national park, which is Canyonlands National Park. At the top of Long Canyon was our fifth and final national park. There are viewpoints for days in Canyonlands, but one of the best known is Mesa Arch. Unfortunately, due to its popularity, it's another place that's difficult to get the shot. We made it back to camp just as the sun is setting. We stopped off in Moab and got a shower on the campgrounds there. So all we have to do now is cook dinner. Uh, I'll show you 
really quickly on the front of the tundra we managed to get everything kind of put back together although one piece is completely broken and will not work thankfully adventure motors is to the rescue it, basically they know everything that's worth knowing about these tundras so they've got the piece on order already that'll be put on and they're actually going to do some work to the tundra so when i'm over there we'll put that on and the CBI bumper that I've got that was supposed to be in for this trip uh, and unfortunately arrived a few days too late it will replace all the brackets that I bent all the way along the front end there so the bumper should be good should be held together and unfortunately this is where we're going to end the video I've got to get back to Kentucky because Conrad has a flight to catch in a few days time as always thanks for watching especially thanks to my patreon supporters they're the people who make this possible. Uh, I'll have tracks, waypoints of the places we went, as well as the places I want to go uploaded to Patreon, so you can check those out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it and subscribe, and even click that little notification button so you get notifications next time I publish one.